Now, listen, you guys, it does seem like Amon Wiggins is out there, um, you know, giving Nicki Minaj flowers because of her ability to basically put her name on it, okay? And uh, we're also going to be talking about Koyle Ray and the boxer, as well as Glorilla mentioning Nicki Minaj alongside the Transformer, Megan the Stallion, as well as Lottery Ticket. Now, it does seem like the Beehive are not pleased by Chloe Bailey, and Nicki Minaj is still supporting JT. Now, these are some of the things that we will be talking about about in this video hello tea lovers and welcome to the tea plug i trust you guys are doing well and i trust you are doing great personally i am doing great you guys i am doing extremely amazing and uh without further ado let us dive straight into today's team so first of all you guys we are going to talk about amon wiggins so you guys do know that well the relationship between the bubs and amon has been a little too shaky it has been actually very shaky because they do feel like well um you know he is such a flip-flopper because it is not a secret actually that during the s train he was one of the forefront bloggers to basically hype the transformer up and to perpetuate um you know these false narratives about Nicki Minaj allegedly okay so obviously you know suburbs feel some type of way but it does seem like lately um he has been realizing that the agenda that they have been trying to push off you know replacing Nicki Minaj and stuff like that has not been working and number two you guys like when it comes to Nicki Minaj like you can only lie to yourself for so long because at the end of the day her greatness will still speak for itself now Amon in his um you know latest um you know video was out there basically saying that oh well this entire you know putting a name on it and everything that's happening even with the guys you know the recross the Drake stuff and everything that's been happening you know in the culture Asian door we have Asian door and Cuban door and Stanagal, we had JT and Glorilla and things like that. So Amon was basically saying that, oh, well, that was all, you know, bred and also encouraged by Nicki Minaj because she's the only one who had the guts to stand on business because a lot of times, you know, these girls, even if they feel some type of way about a person, they are not brave enough to basically, um, to basically come out and say, you know what, I do not mess with you. For a very long time, these girls were being forced to act like they're cool with everybody just so they can say they are a girl's girl and i guess also fear of being you know blackballed by awards these girls need awards okay for them to be able to be talked about because their music their sales they really don't do anything for them so obviously they need to have like a bet award a grammy this and that so that they can be taken seriously so they have to play along with the industry politics in order to be accepted um you know in the industry to be rewarded by those little trophies and things like that but when it comes to an artist like Nicki Minaj that is not the case and I guess once she realized that, you know what, the industry is for, she was like, you know what, you can keep your words. I will basically keep my pride. I'll keep my integrity and I will say whatever I want to say. She was not with the snaky stuff. You know how, you know, someone is out there refusing to submit, you know, uh, work for the Grammys because they don't want their counterpart to also like win a Grammy for that. And at the end of the day, you know, at the same time, they are basically smiling in that other person's, uh, you know, face. And this is the phoniness. Okay. There is no such a word as phoniness but you get what i'm saying this is how phony the music industry is okay and so amon was basically you know bigging up Nicki minaj saying that you know she set the tone for that now every like every other rap gelly wants to have like that moment a big foot moment because she was not scared to pop her ish and people don't even understand how iconic big foot was because this girl bongo too came out to say that well you would never directly address me sort of trying to break and she thought that because she signed under that nation, the fraudulent nation, she really thought that, well, she became untouchable and she was trying to sort of intimidate Nicki Minaj, thinking that Nicki will be scared to go against the fraudulent nation. But <laughs> this is a woman who literally had an entire industry machine go against her. So for her to think that, well, um, Nicki Minaj would be scared of a long-faced boss, like the, the man from the fraudulent nation is very... <laughs> <laughs> that's very delusional of her, okay? This is the lady who de de literally all her peers, majority of her peers turned on her. There was like a, a whole industry machine turning against her, like a lot of payola, a lot of, you know, mainstream media. People were, you know, doing all that to her and she still was able to come out here and pop her ish. So 
they don't understand that big foot for Nicki Minaj was just saying, you know what? I don't care who manages you. I don't care who you are affiliated with. I will stop. I will still pop my ish and you will not silence me just because you're associated with someone. That's why she even went out of her way to basically call out even, you know, rock nation itself she was sending out a message and i love that for her so unfortunately you guys because of this entire thing that's been going on around you know content creation i can't exactly insert i'm on snippet of uh, the interview but in summary this is basically what um you know amon was saying and uh the next thing that we are going to be talking about it seems like cousin sloth was out there being asked uh, who her influences are and she did mention megan the stallion she also mentioned lottery ticket she also mentioned um the transformer as well as Nicki Minaj. So well, some Babs thought like, you know what, it's okay to just leave Nicki Minaj out of all this nonsense because um, you know, people do believe that that time that she sent some, you know, shady tweets that she posted some, you know, shady tweets or that time that her account actually posted some shady tweets it was actually her because she came out later and said that oh well you know her account had just got um you know hacked and that wasn't her on that account but it seems like some fans still do not believe that and with the way she has been moving lately people do feel like you know she does not mess with Nicki Minaj like that so people feel like you know what keep her name um you know out of your mouth and people also believe that after she collaborated with the transformer that's when she stopped liking Nicki Minaj's posts that's when she unfollowed Nicki Minaj so people really look at her sideways because of that okay and personally whilst people are bothered about this entire Nicki Minaj mention that's not the thing that's actually uh you know worrying me right now well worry is a stretch but the thing that actually caught my attention is the way that she mentioned the transformer okay the way she spoke about bongo too you guys she was out there you know hyping her you know i feel like you know despite like regardless of the fact that we actually had the song together it does seem like you know i relate more to her and things like that and i'm like no when did this happen like this goes really <laughs> So all of a sudden they're besties with uh you know Bongo 2. Just yesterday you were cousins with Bongo 1, aka the Transformer. And now all of a sudden cousin sloth. I mean cousin sloth. Partly that's where the cousin part came from. Because some of you were asking me in the comment section why where the cousin sloth came from. Well, cousin came from the fact that she claims that she's everybody's cousin in the industry, especially the transformer. And sloth, oh well, they say in the streets that she is slower than a sloth. So hence the cousin sloth thing, you guys. For those of you who don't know where that came from. So yeah, the fact that just a few months ago she was out there hyping up, you know, cousin cousin, you know, cousin transformer and saying all these things about her as if you know that's her main inspiration and now all of a sudden her main inspiration is um you know bongo too the horse like for me that is a little bit fishy and the way she mentioned the transformer it was just in passing you know like uh oh and also this person and i was like this is a very interesting dynamic this is a very interesting dynamic, you guys, honestly. Um, I found that really questionable. Uh, what is happening behind the scenes, okay? And she also went ahead to say that, well, she does get inspired by Bongo 2 because Bongo 2 is street. And people are like, more like a snitch. People are like, oh, well, uh, you know, it's not like she did not end up having that man behind bars and things like that. And personally, with the Tory Lane situation, you guys, I, I, I don't know what to believe if if I'm going to be honest, I can't sit here and say that, well, Bigfoot really, uh, you know, sent this man to jail, you know, when he didn't do anything to her. And I can also not stand here and say that, well, Tori was innocent. So with this entire situation, honestly, I just like to tread carefully. But that being said, it doesn't negate the fact that, well, allegedly she lied about quite a number of things. So obviously that uh, has the industry looking at her sideways. So people are like, Glow, you're just saying anything right now. OK. And again, you guys, I can't say that snippet It's it's crazy right now in the streets and as far as copyright is concerned uh the next thing that we are going to be talking about you guys Nicki Minaj seemingly is out there supporting Jatavia you guys you know that in my previous video I did talk about how Jatavia has got a new song that's called okay um so a blog posted about that song and Nicki Minaj liked that song now I do for I've been looking at the way JT is moving and I do feel like behind the scenes Nicki Minaj really is giving her advice like that uh you can tell that she's not trying to come up um 
by riding another person's you know wave or by relying heavily on the bubs do you get what i'm saying you can tell that she's trying to create her own fan base even the way she's interacting with the fan base the juvies like you can tell that it's it is Nicki minaj inspired and i wouldn't be surprised if you know behind the scenes you know she's out there mentoring her like that because like if you see her the banter between her and the juvies and like it, the vibe you guys it's literally giving Nicki Minaj Bob's vibe which is not a bad thing because that's how you that is how you farm your fan base to make sure that like they are at the same wavelength with you and I just wanted to you know point that out okay and uh, the next thing that we are going to be talking about it seems like the beehive is not happy with Chloe Bailey because she said in an interview and she cited Kelly's as one of her influences and so the beehive was not having it okay uh, she did say that for a song I uh, have messy as well as this boy bike song that she has she said that well she drew some inspiration from Kelis, and you know how the behinds feel about that so obviously they went in on her they were like oh my goodness like they said some really nasty things to her and things like that and obviously people are glazing all over that no one is blaming beyonce for that but when it's actually I just looked at that and I'm like, oh, how the goalposts really shift, okay? If it were the bubs that were doing this, we wouldn't be hearing the end, the end of it on these blogs. Like, <laughs> I promise you. Like, it would be literally trending on every platform. And I promise you tomorrow... Charlemagne, um, you know, the bleaching god as well as um, DJ Envy, they would be out there basically talking about it tomorrow on the Breakfast Club if it were the bubs that were doing that. But now that it's the beehive, obviously no one is going to talk about it. So I don't know, you guys, let me know what you think about Chloe Bailey showing Kelly some love. Personally, I do feel like with her, I feel hear a lot of Beyonce influence, if I'm going to be honest. Um, I, I don't know. If she says she's getting influenced by Kelly as well, that's nice. But like when I look at the way she performs, um, if we are going to keep it a buck, you guys, she really is heavily inspired by Beyonce. Maybe for those two specific tricks that she mentioned, but everywhere else, her dance moves, her choreography, her performance, her fashion, the way she sometimes speaks, you can tell that, you know, she emulates Beyonce so yeah, I don't know how I feel about her. I, I I don't know, you guys. And some people were even saying that her and her sister have not promoted Cowboy Keta. Do you think that there is a trouble in paradise at Parkwood? Do you think that there's actually, um, you know, trouble there? Or do you think that people are reading too much into it? All right. Um, uh, The next thing that we are going to be talking about, you guys, we are going to talk about... Bambi, I just had to mention this, you guys, because literally when people go out of their ways to embarrass themselves, I just look at them like, what are you doing? What are you trying to do? So I do not know who told Bambi that it is actually a good idea to go on an interview and to start telling us that you have been messing with, um, you know, Scrappy since season one, just the way Erica used to claim and to believe that the entire internet had, um, you know, um, you know, people looking at Erica crazy uh, when she was talking about how Bambi has always been the side chick. Honestly, people would literally come in heavy for erica just for bambi to come out here years later admitting that very same thing and i don't know why she decided to do that i, I don't know why she thought that this would be a gig or a flex because it's actually very pathetic um you know at this point and all those sympathy you know points that she tries to score with the internet obviously no one is going to give them to her as well um you know i mean anymore so let me know you guys in the comment section how you feel about bambi admitting that she has always always been in the picture when Erica and Scrappy were still together okay um thank you very much you guys for watching and thank you very much for making it this far if you haven't already what are you waiting for smash that subscribe button and do turn on the notification bell so that you will be notified each and every time that I post we are on the road to 15,000 subscribers and First stop is Dayton. So if you haven't, please, please do the needful. It is literally just a button, like literally just a click. You don't have to pay any money. So please do the needful. And uh, until my next one, see you.
Oh, you guys, a quick insert. I forgot to talk about the Coily Ray situation. So it does seem like Adrian, the boxer guy, was trying, I don't know whether he was trying to hit on uh, Coily Ray or whether he was just inviting her to her um, to his game. It does seem like, well, that did not sit well with Coily Ray because all that happened whilst she was on live. And uh, in true Benzino's child style, she decided to basically be mean about it. Like there's literally no crime in not wanting to hang with someone or not wanting to date someone but uh the internet really was not feeling the way she went about it she was basically saying oh f off you know and stuff like that that's corny trying to beg me on the internet on my life blah 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 and i you could tell that she really thought she was doing something uh you know when she was sitting in that car but then when the internet came at her literally geez blazing she was left with no option but to backtrack on her energy and personally i do not feel like this was why for i do feel like the guy coming on live on her instagram live is always going to be corny and i do feel like she has the right to say no i don't want to go on a date with you i don't want to you know go anywhere with you anywhere with you but at the same time she could have done it without being extra and all these things okay but then again it's quaily ray you guys it's literally quaily ray so it's not like i'm surprised because it doesn't uh, anyway I was about to finish my video without being uh, mean also. So, yeah, <laughs> until my next one, see you for real, for real this time.